what we are going to cover here it's uh, how we can protect the, the overall open strategy when it comes to either open banking, open finance, open insurance. So protecting the back end uh, and your APIs as well. So from back end to APIs with security uh, with myself and my, my friend, Philippe Turquette. So Philippe, please introduce yourself first. Give me the Sure. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm the lead director here in Syncedia. And well, today, like Chips and said, we're going to present to you guys a little bit about uh, how secure your APIs until the back end to provide a reliable uh, infrastructure for open making, open finance, and so forth. And my name is Gilles Sonasmenta. I'm the head of solutions uh, at Syncedia, looking after the EMEA region. Uh, Again, like just echoing Filippi, the idea here is to show how we can expose uh, microservice APIs from the microservices with, with have guaranteeing security and making sure that they are, you know, reliable enough. Uh, and then for today, what we're going to, to do, uh, very quick, uh, there's a presentation just uh, giving the use case that we're going to show, but of course, giving some context. So what are the security concerns uh, that we want to cover when it comes to microservices and APIs? Uh, what is the role of service mesh and API gateway? Uh, microservices security, API security, and then the demo that will cover all of these aspects of the, of the that we are discussing here today. And to address the, the concerns, uh, there are, of course, there, there's more than, than these ones that we are listing here, but the implementation of microservices and, you know, their API, so the way that we're going to uh, expose these APIs to the public, either in a private or in a, in a fully open uh, way, they, they, they have to be basically considered to guarantee that, you know, data is protected, uh, that the the users that are consuming those APIs, uh, ultimately the microservices, they are the right users. So we bring here four concerns that we want to address today, which is the first one and perhaps one of the most important ones, the standardization of security. Uh, what that means, you know, it's basically by leveraging the tools and leveraging standards, we guarantee that even if you have different teams implementing microservices, if you are distributing, breaking your, your domains, for example, and having the teams following all the same standards, the same patterns, that helps a lot in guaranteeing security when exposing services. Uh, another concern is guaranteeing the communication is secure so that the channels that you are uh, exposing your APIs or that you are connecting to your backend or even making sure that the, the security of the communication, service to service communication, it's also in place. Uh, authentication authorization processes. So the idea is to know who your customer is and giving them access only to the resources that they really have to access. And another aspect that we that we believe it's uh, it's a strong point for us to to measure and to to concern be concerned about it's putting policies in place that guarantee that you have the right limitations to access your apis and also that you are protecting from the most common threats right like, like all the sql protection xml protection, uh, injections as well and to to give a general overview uh, we split this into two different aspects. So I'm going to start not top to bottom, but bottom to top. Uh, basically, we have the internal communication being managed by the service mesh uh, uh, platform, which guarantees uh, security. Of course, it's standardized and centralized security. It has some other uh, benefits as well. For example, guaranteeing traffic management, providing observability, abstracting the network, and of course, uh, 
promoting development for business and not for infra because you delegate those non-functional requirements to the service mesh platform. So the east-west traffic, so the communication among all of these services that you have managed and protected by the service mesh platform. On the other hand, when it comes to north and south traffic, so the exposure of APIs to, like I mentioned before, either an open strategy to the public or a private strategy, for instance, if you think about Netflix, they have a bunch of APIs, but they're all internal. There's, there's no open APIs. So the APIs that you expose to the external world, uh, those are managed by the API platform there. And among the benefits of the, the API platform, we can highlight like the creation of products. So you compose several microservices to then expose uh, one API to expose a product. Governance on top of your APIs, understanding what your APIs uh, are doing, how they are performing, who is consuming your APIs. Security, which is our main focus today. Uh, it enables developer experience, provides more management, more control of your third parties. So you know uh, how your, your consumers or your partners are onboarded. You define a very well uh, process, very crystal clear process for that. And it also promotes a lot of uh, auditability. So you know everything that is going on. Again, today our main focus for these two platforms, for these two components is security. So now we are going to deep dive a bit more in how these two components uh, can help promoting security. Over to you, Felipe. Sure. Uh, so starting with the East and West traffic, meaning that uh, your internal traffic. So presumably uh, we are working on a bunch of microservices and this infrastructure may grow and will grow in the future, of course, but uh, how we can promote security, how we can be sure that our microservices are following the standards and the teams are following the standards to promote security. Okay, so uh, one uh, topic that's pretty interesting to, to start the, this promotion is the zero trust uh, network. So. Even your internal network inside your cloud is considered non-secured. So we start the security from the beginning at the uh, design uh, of the microservices. And of course, with the service mesh infrastructure, with the service mesh layer, uh, this is a, a non-functional requirement. So there is no code involved. And this demo, we're going to present how we start this zero trust network, some aspects of zero trust network, of course. Uh, how we can provide security in the ingress gateway using MTLS, meaning that uh, who is going to consume those microservices from the external world. So this component must follow some rules and we are uh, using MTLS to do so. Uh, intra service communication, even your services, one service call another, we are using MTLS even in this layer. And how we can do one, of course, this is just one strategy to do authentication and authorization inside your services, meaning that uh, one team must communication must establish the communication to the other team using uh, an auth authentication and authorized pattern. Okay, so those are the aspects uh, covering the internal cluster security. And of course, we are using the CCD API platform. Uh, so basically, those are the aspects of the security for external consumers, uh, your customers, your partners that want to consume your APIs. So uh, this uh, concern, most part of it uh, will be managed by the API platform itself. So we start with MTLS communication for business to business, meaning that your partners and your customers will consume your APIs using MTLS. Uh, and again, uh, between the communication within the, the backends, meaning the microservices, and the API gateway, you're also using MTLS, like I said, and the API gateway itself is prepared to use it. Authentication and authorization inside the, the API platform for your customers and partners using OAuth two flows, injection protections, XSS protections, rate limiting, well, uh, other 
uh, important security concerns that we are going to cover. So a little bit of context. This is the overall architecture. Okay, so we are working in a multi-cloud perspective. So our uh, API platform is uh, software as a service base. So it's running inside the Syncydia servers. Uh, we do have a Kubernetes cluster set up on a public cloud. And inside this, this Kubernetes cluster, we do have Istio in our service mesh installed with three services, account service, which is the service that we are going to use for our external communication. Payment service and customer services are not accessible externally. So uh, our accounting service is managed to call those two other services. So this is the overall architecture. Remembering that everybody, every customer or a partner that wants to call the account service here must pass through our API gateway using MTLS. Our API gateway will also use MTLS to communicate within the Kubernetes cluster and even internal uh, accounting service communicating to the payment service and to the customer service. We are also using MTLS. And since CDI Gateway has the capability to provide all of two flows for authentication and authorization, and our service mesh also does provide this type of capability for uh, internal authentication and authorization. So this is the overall architecture. And sorry, it's not thank you yet. So let's move along to the demo. So I'm going to move back and forth to our API gateway and our service mesh, but I'm going to tell you guys even when I'm using one platform or another. So one quick thing, this is the API, uh, the external API that I'm going to use throughout the demonstration, okay? And this is an example of an API portal. So presumably, your customers and partners will see the, the documentation for API or want to consume it. So this is where everything starts. This is my north and south communication, of course. And this is our API platform. And this is our API. So this documentation is corresponding for this API here. Uh, as you guys can see, I do have uh, multiple environments, OK? So let's focus on this environment here, open innovation, with this base path, OK, which is the environment configured to use in open, uh, MTLS with the, the certificates configured. So this is the general data of the API itself, the version of the API, the revision from it, base paths, the description, responsible, so forth. Uh, this means the, the API is visible for the entire organization at this case. And this is the configuration to show the API throughout our uh, API portal, which is toggled to our gateway. Uh, this is the environment, like I said, that the, the API is deployed, and those are the resources that we're going to use. So let's start the interesting stuff. Uh, in the CCD API gateway, every single operation has its flow. Okay, so in this case, I'm managing the entire flow of the entire API, meaning every single operation of the API will pass through those resources here okay so to start we had a lot of flow here like i said using at this point to be to be more simple client credentials okay so uh this is entirely managed by the syncedia gateway meaning that this client credential here will be managed by by our authorization flow off to server behind the scenes and to manage the configuration client IDs and client secrets, we do have the apps to do it, OK? And I do have my app uh, here already configured, meaning that I do have a client ID and a client secret, a valid client ID and a client secret, to access my API. So I'm going to show you guys real quick here, changing the context to the postman real quick. This is our authorization server in action. I'm using my client ID and client secret that I just showed you guys to generate an access token, a valid access token for this. And for this one, like I said, I'm using openinnovation.apiplatform.cncd.com as my base path. 
and using the access token that I just generated. I can call the API with no problems, but if I remove it, no access token. So this is the first security component, okay? This is the most basic one. Back to the API and back to my flows. We do have other specific components like SQL thread protection, okay? Uh, I can choose where to protect. In this case, I'm protecting pretty much everything, body, headers, square params, cookies, and path params. XSS thread protections, and we already uh, bring the most common rejects for here, but if there is some pattern that uh, we need to protect, we can provide the rejects here in the location. It's the URL, query param, header, or body. Uh, I'm just adding a, a header here for my service mesh purposes. This is not a security component. I'm adding here rate limiting. Uh, it's a pretty big rate limiting per minute just to not cause problems for us, but this is just an example for rate limiting to start the protection against, against the DDoS attack, for example. And here, I'm, of course, I, I put a very big uh, payload size here, but uh, we also can put a payload size limit in our API to protect our backend also. And this is a, a component, uh, a security component. And every logging uh, component that Syncedia is putting in, we have the disclaimer and we do have the capability to encrypt the log even in the URL path and query parents. Okay, so this is again, it's additional security layer against data leaks, for example. So we are not logging everything open, for example. Uh, one quick thing to before reach our backend, uh, the entire request will pass through all those components, okay? And reach our backend here. Sorry, let me just to reach our backend here, which is one load balancing on top of our Kubernetes cluster, okay? And changing to our service mesh platform, just to show you guys our, the backends. This is the namespace that we are talking about, Syncedia Bank. And those are the three services that I showed you in the, the presentation, okay? Account service, customer, and payments. But the first configuration here and the first step to bring up a security channel between our API platform and our cloud is this one, meaning that we are using in the ingress gateway, meaning that every flow that's reaching my Kubernetes cluster from outside, we use MTLS. And this one is a secret configured in our Kubernetes cluster with the certificate, okay? Meaning that I need to sign your certificate for you to be able to talk to my backend, okay? So in this case, I already did it back to our API platform. In my environment, using my Open Innovation environment, Open Innovation CNC the platform, uh, I already had configured a valid certificate for my API days backend here, which is already signed, okay, for me to be able to consume my my backends throughout my my Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so this configuration is already done. And like I already showed you guys, this is the API from the Open Innovation throughout my backend. So everything's functional here. And just to make sure that you guys have the visualization of the entire thing running. So this is an observability component and those are the services. I do have a curl running on the background to uh, show this online for you guys. And, meaning that I'm receiving the flow throughout my ingress gateway, meaning my API gateway is passing the flow, flow throughout my Kubernetes cluster, throughout my account service, and the account service is calling the payment service and the customer service, and they are connecting to their databases. So everything's up and running, and again, every flow is configured, okay? Back to our API gateway, 
Uh, I do have an interesting capability here. Uh, okay, so we add every single uh, security capability that we want. Although, just to show you guys in terms of latency and cost, which is pretty interesting. Uh, sorry, wrong API. Uh, well, we, we may have a problem in our uh, logs, although, so uh, let's return on this topic a little bit later, but uh, well, uh, moving forward to our service mesh security, meaning that uh, let's secure our east and west traffic, okay? So my account service is calling my payment service and my account service is calling my customer service. Although this is a public cloud and I'm inside my Kubernetes cluster, so how we can provide security in this case? Choosing my Syncydia bank namespace again. Uh, every component here every service has an internal deployment for customers, for example, we do have internal deployment. Uh, and in our service mesh abstraction, we just provide alongside with the Istio capability to enable an MTLS and Istio will manage the internal communication and also will manage the certificate, short-lived certificates to provide MTLS uh, communication even inside the services, meaning that my account service is calling the customer service and it needs to use MTLS encryption. And this is the only configuration that we need to toggle, okay? Uh, it's the same configuration for the payment service. Although the payment service, we do have two different configurations, okay? we uh, I do have a Kenner release for payment service and uh, this is the normal release for the V1, okay? And again, already enabled MTLS and I do have a V2 deployment with the same type of security, meaning that uh, you can do multiple deployments in different uh, versions uh, for your microservice with the same type of security. Okay, and showing throughout the graph, you can add the security view here to see if everything is flowing. So the log chain here will show we are using a secure communication, a secure channel within all the services. Okay, so that's it for the channel security, of course, and some of the components for our North and South and East and West security. Uh, our service mesh also, I do have a configuration here for the payment services. I just put a uh, external deployment for our payment service to show an example. Also, we do have the capability to do authentication and authorization for internal services, meaning that uh, for you to communicate within a service that is deployment, even internally, we can do authentication and authorization. Uh, to configure it, it's pretty straightforward, okay? So let me just grab our configurations here. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm using an open ID provider, okay? So this is the issuer and JKWS URI. Just configure it real quick and copy and paste things. And here I can include or exclude path to add the security, which is pretty handy. At this point, let's just secure dash payments, dash star, and dash payments. Just to show you guys some options to secure everything. At this point, after I add this rule, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I need uh, authentication, uh, uh, authenticated user to use the service. And at this point, probably uh, our service will break because I do need authentication. Uh, but let's just show you guys the, is in action. So like I said, 
I'm added the deployment directly to the load balancing without passing through the API gate just to show this configuration, of course. Uh, without an authorization, a proper authorization, our service will be denied. And calling our OpenID provider here, which is running alongside our Kubernetes cluster. we can reach the payment service again. So this is one option to do authentication and authorization. It's the same rule for authorization, okay? This is the same pattern and almost the same configuration. To be simpler, I'm not going to do everything, but this is the same situation, okay? Just add the rule, add the key component, uh, the policy component that we want to secure and move along. So again, uh, we are abstracting no functional security requirements at the service mesh perspective, meaning that there is no code involved. Okay, so there's no change in my microservice. My microservice is developed only to handle the business itself. So again, East and West security, even inside your cluster, you can do authentication and authorization uh, if you don't want to involve the API gateway itself. Let's delete this rule to not cause problems in our rest of the presentation. Like I said, I just added the authentication perspective and start to break the payment flow, like I said. So removing the rule is going to, to be normal again. Uh, moving back to our API platform, okay, and to go along with the more details about our token generation and uh, apps, okay. Like I said before, uh, we do have a fully capability to provide tokenization here, and I already, I already have this configuration. Although we do have other concerns, uh, I can provide an app here, but the API gateway itself has another capability to provide specific plans, okay, meaning that. I already have a plan configured here, meaning that for specific customers or a specific plan that I want to provide to my partners or customers, I can also provide, it's not a fully billing capability, but it's an interesting capability that we can add a quota monthly and block those calls optionally, of course. If this customer reach or if this group of customers reach this quota, I will block those calls. And of course, this plan here is associated with the specific API or a specifics API. Okay, I can uh, choose multiple APIs here. And one plan is associated to the app, like I said, bringing me fully control of who is accessing which API and who have the permissions to reach API and also provide some controls, some interesting controls, especially if I can bring some concerns about the API as a product, for example. So this is another capability. Go ahead, Gibson. Just to add on what you're saying there, the creation of, of plans, they also support somehow the creation of scope. So you define what is the scope of that particular plan. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're going to show this uh, in the next, next couple of minutes, next uh, uh, things that you're saying, but it, there, it also offers you, the, so apart from the definition of scopes, the definition of particular policies that are concerning a specific plan. So you define the scope, but you can also have different limits, rate limits. So Felipe was showing that during the creation of the API flow, you can define what is the rate limit for that API but you can also define that on your plan level. So you you enable different, it's not secure security standards, but you can apply different limitations to enhance your security uh, on the level of a plan as well. Uh, yep, yeah. so one interesting thing here is that the same flows that applied in the API perspective, I can apply in the uh, in the plan perspective. So uh, if you guys have a specific 
group of users or group of uh, uh, customers that need a specific security concern or a specific transformation, for example, we can do it in the plan perspective already. So uh, this is an extension of the flows throughout the API. And one important thing, it's back again, our trace here. So, okay, we had the the entire security flows, so all flows, so on and so forth. So basically, at this call, uh, this is the, the API trace, OK? And this is where I can see every single detail of the API itself, of the, the who is calling the API, OK? So this is every single detail, meaning that I'm executing the API interceptors, which is the flow that I showed you guys. I'm executing the OAuth interceptor, meaning I'm validating the token uh, here and here. I'm executing SQL thread protections, XSS protections. I'm including the header for my Kubernetes cluster. Executing my hate limiting, but I'm validating the hate limiting. Uh, and also, I'm executing the payload size interceptor. Everything, every single step until the forward my request to my backend is taking three milliseconds, meaning that there is no substantial time added in the request, even with all those security components in the API gateway perspective. So the, the average time is five milliseconds, but most, uh, most part of it is we are doing everything in three milliseconds, even the logging capability. Yeah, After yeah. that is forwarding the request for our backend here mm -hmm. and awaiting for the response. So the backend took 553 milliseconds. So this is the total time in terms of milliseconds of the call. Yeah, so just, again, just to add uh, on that, uh, one, one of the biggest concerns, especially when it comes to financial institutions, banks, uh, insurers, it's the the latency that security adds they know of course that adding security it's it's a must you need to add security but there's a huge concern on how much of all of this security it's going to consume of the api call of the general api call so how much longer this will take to be able to respond something to the customers uh, and this is uh, so what, what philip is showing here it's it's to give an idea that adding security shouldn't be a problem to the API flow. Sometimes the problem is actually in the backend because of, let's say, complex process that need to be uh, that need to occur before you reply something to your customer. But adding, you know, because we're talking here about complex security, uh, MTLS. So we you know, we have certificates validation. We have authentication authorization and loads of policies being validated here. And all of that doesn't consume more than three milliseconds to the API call, which is, I would say, it's nearly insignificant because you are applying all the, the, the security validations to guarantee that your API consumer, it's the one that, that it's, it's saying who he is, and you're validating loads of things there. So that shouldn't be a big concern when it comes to exposing APIs in a secure fashion. And of course, complied with the, with the regulations in place. So uh, this is the detailed API call. And again, uh, until the beginning, until the uh, call to the backend perspective. And the last part of it, is how we are managing the MTLS on the API calls. So again, our API platform does offer the capability to configure inbound address with MTLS certificates. So my host here, Open Innovation API Platform, sincida.com. I'm using MTLS version 1.2 to 1.3. And I using my certificate. I'm not going to show the certificate itself here, but uh, I'm going to show this in action. So uh, I can configure the certificate here. 
which is uh, this London, like I showed you guys. And of course, in the API call, in my tooling that I call it just to show, I'm using the same certificate for open innovation cc.com and I'm able to call the APIs within the same address. And this is working normally, although this is how MTLS works. So if I remove my certificate here, so presumably that I want to call this API, but I don't have the certificate signed by it. And here we go. I'm not able to call it. So uh, again, I'm using MTLS for the entire flow until the API call throughout my uh, communication within my API gateway and my Kubernetes cluster. And even inside my cluster, I'm using MTLS, of course, using different components. Although every single component and every single service have the this, this type of security in the channel security. And I can add, again, I can add OAuth two flows in my API gateway. We can support every single OAuth two flow. And also we support this authorization and authentication capabilities inside our service mesh capabilities. So uh, this is a way to bring up uh, zero trust network security fashion. Of course, we do have other capabilities to leverage, but those are the most important most important ones that we are leveraging. And important to mention that there is no code inside the microservices involved. Those are just configurations and configuration is pretty clear and straightforward to build inside our platforms. So Gibson, have anything else to add? Um, no, not really. I think that's, you know, we covered the most important aspects when it comes to exposing uh, the APIs from the backend service in a secured way. Mm, no, not really. Uh, perhaps what we could uh, just give some more emphasis here is that uh, Philippe mentioned there's no uh, code involved either in the service mesh platform or even here inside the API management platform. We, all the security uh, policies that we added there, uh, like Felipe was showing as well, there's there is no code involved. So we basically select the security features that we want or the whatever policies, you know, from traffic control, security tracing. And it's just a matter of enabling them and configuring where you want to execute or what exactly you want to execute. So there's no code involved. It's it's pretty straightforward, uh, simple, and, and basically fast to expose an API guaranteeing security as well. So those components are exposed by a drag and drop fashion. And like I said, we do have other security capabilities. Even if there is something really wrong happening, we can do IP, IP filtering, for example. There are XML thread protections also, uh, time token validation, well, you name it. The bigger part of the API security, we can uh, actually build throughout the drag and drop capabilities inside our API gateway or inside our service mesh. Yeah, folks, um, yeah, we're actually heading towards the end of the session. We managed to finish a bit earlier than we than we expected. If there's any questions from the audience, or you can feel free to either send a message here in the web chat, or you can connect to us either on LinkedIn or even here inside the, the Hopping platform. I'd like to thank API Days for the opportunity. Thanks for those who join us today. Lippy, thanks for preparing the demo as well. <laughs>